Platoon Divers in Las Vegas, Nevada. Just by way of introduction, uh, you are... I'm Steve Kalso, owner of AAI Neptune Divers, Las Vegas, Nevada. There we go. Divers out in, uh, in Las Vegas. Yeah. And uh, uh, Steve yeah. was just uh, telling me about the quagga mussels that have invaded uh, Lake Mead. Now, of course, those of us in the St. Lawrence River are familiar with the zebra mussel, um, but not so much with the quagga mussel. The quagga is actually a very powerful zebra uh, of that family. The thing about them is they're ferocious breeders and they swimmers. They can detach, move along, and reattach wherever they want, which has really put them in. We had none four years ago, and now everywhere you look underwater, it is just covered in zebras. Looks like reefs almost. And at nighttime, they all have their little tongues sticking out, filtering the water. So it's we don't know what's going to happen. But they've also gone from Lake Mead down into the Colorado River and are working up north. Oh, that's interesting. Well, from uh, from our perspective up on the St. Lawrence River, uh, we can pretty much predict what's going to happen. Um, about, it's probably 20 or 25 years ago now, as you may be aware, the zebra mussel and to a certain extent the quagga mussel invaded the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence River. The result of that has been that the visibility has gone from what used to be probably 10 or 15 feet on a good day to in in certain times of the year upwards of 100 foot visibility uh, in the bitter cold right at the end of uh, the springtime before all of the aquatic uh, uh, weeds and the like start spawning we can quite readily see 100 to 110 foot visibility. Uh, in the summertime when the water's warmed up to 72 degrees or so, uh, we can see uh, 45 to 60 foot visibility at uh, 100 or 110 feet. So what it's done for the diving industry is just tremendous. Yeah, so I've heard that. Hopefully it's going to do the same thing for you guys in Lake Mead from a diving thing. Now other people yeah. will swear at them. But. The, the problem that we're concerned with mainly is that their byproduct is a small amount of phosphate. And the phosphate has a tendency to kill off the indigenous particle which are eaten by the bigger fish, which are then eaten by the bigger fish, You're which right. are then eaten the biggest fish. So we don't know how the ecological disaster is going to uh, change our lake. But we're we are hoping for clarity in the lake, although the lake itself is relatively clear. We used to get 100-foot vis in the wintertime anyways. Really? So, yeah, 30, 40 feet on a good day in the summer, but often 10, 20 feet uh, because of the warm water. We get mm -hmm. up to 84 degrees Holy in the smoke. summertime, and we get down to about 54 degrees in the wintertime. So right now, it's we don't know. It's all new, and nobody knows what's going on. Right. So to, to get down to uh, various uh, questions, the kind of questions that uh, the typical diver might ask, um, already you've identified yourself and where you are, but um, what is uh, a, a diver who's uh, going to be diving, either a local diver or somebody who's in town for a convention, for example, um, what can a diver, what can a diver expect uh, to, to be seeing or diving here in this area? Well, currently, our biggest problem at the lake is the drought going on in the west. Mm -hmm. uh, this drought's been going on for 10, 12 years now. And our lake is gone down from an average of about 1218, where 1225 is fully and actually overflow. We're now at 1,930 feet. So we're down 140 feet from our normal levels, which means everything we used to have to dive on out here has gone out of the water. and. We're finding new stuff, stuff we could never get to before because it was at 200 plus feet. So currently getting to the lake on a road is almost non-existent due to several factors. One, the water's gone down, the roads are not there. Two, many construction projects are going on because we get our water from the lake mm -hmm. and the water intakes, which should be 150 feet, are now 10 feet underwater and any more we could lose them. Uh, so you have to get out on the lake, but once you get on the lake, there's some very unique things 
in this lake that people don't know about. Mm -hmm. There is a B-29 bomber, almost fully intact, up in the Overton Arm. Now this is specialty dive and only certain uh, authorized people are allowed to uh, take you on it. But it is a completely intact B-29. There is a World War II Higgins boat in about 60 feet of water now, the old landing craft they use on Normandy beaches. Mm. And at 190 feet, there's a uh, PBY, the old Catalina flying boat that is in the lake. On top of that, there's approximately 7,000 sunken boats in this lake. Given that 9.5 million people a year use the lake, eh, a lot of drinking and driving and boating, and they go down and people don't recover them because they don't know where they're at or they're too shallow. So we're constantly finding things that are unique. There's also the trailings from the building of the dam where the batch plant where they made up all the batches of cement. Mm -hmm. All of it, the ag piles and stuff like that are down there. And then over in the canyon you can actually get down to some of the tunnels and stuff they went to bypass the water. So there's a lot of unique things to dive. There's about 1,100 miles of shoreline to this lake. Wow. So go anywhere, find a cove, jump overboard and go see what's there. All right. The, the, the common denominator common denominator being that uh, the access to the lake seems to be from a boat by and large uh, yeah, whether right now to do any of the good diving you just about need access to a right. boat and there are not unfortunately any boat operations running uh, on a consistent basis uh, it's just not a practical because it's a national park we have to have permits to do everything for the dive stores or for the boat operations have to be full-blown captains and unless you get enough people it just doesn't pay to operate a boat yep i know that painful truth myself from having experienced that on the st lawrence river it's a especially because we're a lot more seasonal up there um, yeah. although we do have avid divers who dive through the ice and the like but by and large you're looking at about uh, five months in a good year where you can take divers out and trying to cram a whole business years worth of uh, worth of work and income into those few months and uh, you know if the weather goes bad or the economy goes bad then you're impacted it's a tough business it really is uh, there are a few the best way to make a million dollars in the dive industry is to start with two million that's right i've heard that it's a labor of love <laughs> yeah you gotta love the industry to be in it i've heard the same thing about uh, marinas as well <laughs> yeah. yeah it's a it's a tough business uh, do you take is is predominantly your your dive trips are out to Lake Mead or do you take groups out to uh, California about we five hours away? We rarely take people out to Lake Mead um, because we're not set up to do that. We rent them gear, teach mm -hmm. lessons, and thing. Most of our group trips anymore are to you know the Caribbean, the South Pacific, Mexico, somewhere like that. Mm -hmm. You know, being in Vegas, it's centrally located. We have several hubs of airlines out of here and. We're four and a half hours from anywhere. Right. I can be in Florida in four and a half hours, and I can be in Hawaii in four and a half hours. Wow. I can drive to California in four and a half hours. Yeah. So. Uh, you might consider sending guys up to dive on the St. Lawrence River. I think they'd There's find it. There's been some people that have been expressing that. Yeah. It's nobody's, to my knowledge, is setting up trips to do that. Right. And usually we book through a, you know, a clearinghouse somewhere that says okay here's a package going to Cozumel and this is what it's going to cost you the airfare and the hotel and all included yeah so for uh, facilities uh, local facilities then you've got your dive shop and and as you just said you uh, you train here obviously mm -hmm. uh, are you uh, patty is that right no, I'm actually a Naui facility Naui facility uh, yeah and, and I'm the only Naui facility in town at the moment uh, we have for patty facility you know we're here to support the divers and people come into town we'll try and help you we don't have setups for sending you out to the lake like i wish we did but uh if it ever comes about then we'll be happy to tag you up with somebody who can and uh your phone number oh 702-452-5723 very good thank you it's been a pleasure and i'm sure our other divers will uh, enjoy hearing about the shop thank you